start recording. You're an awful human being. Baby husk, do 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 do. <laughs> Baby husk in the desert, do 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 do. <laughs> Yep. Uh, yeah. Absolutely hey, folks. Terrible human being. <laughs> hey, folks. Lance Dreader here. Welcome back to another episode on Create Above and Beyond. I'm over here in the desert at our mob farm with Knock Flame. Hello. Putting evil songs in his head. Mm hmm. Totally are. All right. So I figured since I did this all on a stream, uh, this mob farm mostly. Uh, did a little more tweaking off stream, but I did this mostly on stream, so I thought we'd go through and show it off now on a regular video and talk about how it works. So if you want to see how it was built, you can go watch that stream back. Uh, but here it is. Uh, I've added some contraption to the top to try and filter out some of the output of the of the farm, and it it outputs a lot of stuff. It really does. Um. Then this is set up with a smithing profession, which allows us to send all of our iron and gold armor drops through that to get some coins. You can see I was running it a little bit ago. I already got 75 coins or 45 coins sitting in there waiting for me. Uh, and then there's also a drawer system over here to kind of handle some of the common drops. And uh, the thing that we don't have handled is the diamond armor. Diamond armor kind of needs to go back to the base and then be processed there at, in the smeltery so we can get the most diamond back out of it if we want to do that. And of course we want to do that. And then I also need to filter out the leather armor and just send it into a pool of lava at some point. But disclaimer, this thing works too good. <laughs> So if you happen to build this, it, it does. It works too good. There's four. There's eight spawners in it um, that were moved from the bottom level of a dungeon. So they have the extra hard to kill mobs with all their extra armor. And it does occasionally throw some items that end up not wanting to get into the system. You can see them down there. Um, so yeah, disclaimer. It's not the best mob farm ever. Does it work? Yes. Does it work too good? Possibly. <laughs> um, but yeah, if we come down here, we can see the mechanism. It is being powered off of a, you know, the flywheel we've got. We've actually got a blast furnace. So that should be giving us, let me see. I've got my engineer's eyes on. Let me look at this. Where is it? Tell me. Flywheel. There it is. Generating 32,000 uh, kinetic units. And we're definitely not using nearly that much over here. I just wanted to be able to get, like not have to worry about power and be able to run all of my belts at maximum speed. Uh, which may or may not be the best idea, to be honest. Uh, but yeah, we feed uh, kelp into it to power the furnace. And that can be fed in from the top up there. And then all of the uh, Iron armor is not going to eventually end up down here, so the only thing that's being fed down here now is chainmail, and it should only be iron tools, but iron swords end up down here too because they're classified as tools. Technically, the swords could go through to the blacksmith, but it's not that big of a deal. We're, get, we're getting so much stuff off of this farm anyway. In fact, let me just toss all these extra bits of armor that I had picked up from running it a few minutes earlier. Drop those in our system. And then, I don't even want to turn this on. I think you guys can go watch the stream if you want to see this work. Uh, this is the timer that prevents the, yeah, thank you, Knock. Uh, even though I think you muted again. Uh, this is a timer that adjusts uh, for the type of fuel. So we're using kelp, which requires 140 seconds and since these get a little iffy, these adjustable a minute forty, minute forty. <laughs> when I say one hundred and forty seconds, that's not the same. Mm -hmm. Totally that's different time. Totally there. different number there. Yeah. Um. But yeah, that's why these are. There's two of these, and they're set to fifty seconds each because we want to keep the the number fairly precise. And when you get up above a minute, these become less precise. So that's why there's two. We can adjust that very finely. And if we decide to change the fuel type. We have to adjust these timers but what this does is 
the moment see you see this line coming over to this hopper this is this hopper that's feeding the feet the the item in what it does is it means that as the kelp burns down the item is only fed in at the last moment to keep that kelp burning and then we only burn one item per chunk of 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 uh of kelp normally it would process 20 items now if we process 20 items for each each block of kelp we'd quickly run out of armor to keep the farm running so what i've done is put this timer on and it only feeds one piece of armor in per block of kelp to burn and then yes and then and that's also creating a little bit of iron down here i just put that there to make sure that the furnace didn't get jammed up basically <laughs> uh, and that's why i'm only feeding iron down so that it stacks i'm not I'm not feeding any of our gold armor or any of that other stuff down here i only want iron, iron to come down because i don't want this to get jammed up so that's all that and then i've got a redstone link from the upstairs so that we can turn this whole system off without actually coming down here and what that does is it sends a redstone signal into that block turning off that hopper and that hopper so that it will no longer feed even when this pulses and that's how we turn this that's how we turn it off from upstairs and then i switched this from ladder to a fan because i thought that was just more cool <laughs> it definitely keeps you nice and clean you know you get a wash every time you come up maybe i should put the the, the half slab back there to keep your head from going up too high uh but yeah, my issue my issue was my wall crawling boots oh okay wall walking boots. wall walking boots yeah those can those are fun but they can become a problem uh, if you happen to get that enchantment on your boots you just have to learn how to deal with it i guess once you get used to it they're actually really fun and that is from the uh, uh the grappling hook mod yeah, that's a fun mod too. In fact, I don't think I've shown that any on any of the recorded videos. I might have briefly showed. What is it? Backpack? My bag. Open my bag. So I do have a grappling hook. Uh, and I don't know what happened to my Ender Slime boots, but now I had a block of slime in in my in my inventory instead of my boots. What? Where's my slime boots? I had slime boots on when I logged out. What? They changed the recipe. They drastically changed the recipe for those. Really? Yeah, okay. So, yeah. Uh, oh, I guess it should be important for us to mention right about now is that we updated to the 1.3 version of the pack. So some of the recipes have changed, and that is obviously one of them. And there's some new stuff down here. There's slime skulls. I don't know what those are. Those are new. Uh, I don't remember them being in JEI before. And there's also the slime elytra. What? I could have a slime elytra? I don't even know. I don't even know. Uh, this is really no good place to use this uh, grappling hook right here <laughs> because it's a desert. Uh, it works much better in jungles and, and mountainous areas. Stuff. It's also good for other things, but it's not going to do me much good right now. Uh, what is going to do me good is to get the heck out of here. All right, that's that's the farm. That's the uh, mob farm. Going to produce all of the iron, gold, and well, not really gold, but I mean, we could have it producing gold for us. All we got to do is filter the gold armor off and melt them down, which might not be a bad idea because we were running a little low on gold. That might be bad, not be a bad idea. We don't have any issue with iron, so there's no reason to save the iron armor. Uh, but we definitely want to save the diamond, maybe the gold. So I might have to change that filter later. Ooh, goodness. Lags, 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 lags. Okay, I might just wait till it catches up here for a second. Okie doke. Are we here? Are we good? Seems to be okay now. All right, let's go show you what I've been working on in here. I mean, uh, we've been, you know, general general decoration stuff. So over here, did some more improvements, added some more finishing touches just to make everything look good and supported and stuff. Trying to, anyway, trying to make everything look good. Um, we changed this. The foundry now is 
pretty much automatic. And yeah, my sword. Be your sword. What? Here, let me uh. The wrong uh, button. Let me switch my. Too many games again. Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, yeah, you gotta be careful about that. Um. So yeah, each one of these is filtered to have only one particular metal come to it. And it has one for each of the types of metal that we commonly process in here. Uh, if there's something that we don't commonly process in here and then we end up getting something there, all we have to do is temporarily take out one of the filters on one of the basins that's empty at the moment, and it will filter out the last thing there. So, uh, But yeah, this is mostly automatic and it's great for processing uh, like armor down, uh, particularly gold and diamond armor. Uh, yeah, and I did, hey, by the way, I did switch the cobalt for diamond now, so that's okay. taken care of. And we're going to be processing our cobalt over here because we get more cobalt out of it. If you process it in here, you get some bonus materials, but you don't get as much of the original material. So if you need the bonus materials, you would process it in the foundry. But if you don't, and we don't, we're going to process it over here for the maximum amount of the original material. Particularly cobalt is really all I'm talking about. Now, I've been walking by this thing for like forever, and I, I, I said I was going to talk about it at some point and like look at it and like comment on it, and I haven't done that. So let's do that right now since I'm right here. And it's a really cool looking mod. Uh, I don't know how well it fits the pack and stuff or, you know, how genuinely useful it is, but it is meat. And it is the drink beer mod. <laughs> So we get these mugs, we get like four of these mugs, and it comes with these, well it doesn't come with, but you can craft this, uh, was it beer, E-R, beer? It's a you, recipe you, package, I think it was. Recipe board package, right? You, you craft this thing, it's not too expensive, but it gives you all these little boards, right? These are the actual recipes, and if you look at them closely, they tell you the recipes for each of the types of beer. Um. And yeah, that, you might see the beer bugs hanging around our, our base all over the place. And that's because we brewed some up and set them around because, uh, you know, we want all our employees to feel like, uh, you know, it's a good time. So we got plenty of them, plenty of drinks around for them. <laughs> we got them here. They're a nice little decoration and don't look bad. And uh, they have little effects that they do. They take a really long time to brew. So they're not nearly as uh, useful as potions, but they are neat. And I just thought I would share that with you. It looks cool. If you was gonna set up like some kind of bar or something like that, that would, they make excellent decorations. So there, there's that. So we talked about that. All right, so let's move on to the next thing. I don't wanna run out of time in this episode before we at least show you all the progress we made. Uh, and I believe I've showed this all off before. Yeah, in a previous one, I think I recorded... Did I record the Chromaticator working in, at peak efficiency? I don't know if I have yet. Uh, I don't know about peak efficiency, but I know we did get, a, get it recorded in, the, in front of an episode before. All right, so I think I, I showed some of this off before, but let me talk about what I've changed. I'm pretty sure I've changed this since I did that recording. Uh, I got rid of the brass tunnels. Got rid of the brass tunnels and replaced them with brass funnels because this belt was really a, a choke point because of the funnels or i mean because of the tunnels the tunnels don't accept the items nearly as fast as the funnels do oh gosh this gets confusing real fast because there's uh, tunnels funnels and and shoots <laughs> uh at least the shoots are different enough that you can you when know, i say shoot, i don't get them confused as easily anyway I changed these all to brass funnels because they work much faster to clear the belt. So as items are, so things don't get, and let me just go hit the button. You'll see what I'm talking about. All right. Let me turn on the chromaticator. We'll run a cycle. So yeah, this create, that creates the things. We know how this works, right? And then it drops all this stuff in here. You can see that there's other stuff going in there as well, including the uh, gr the crushing wheels. The stuff comes out. 
And I really don't have any issue with that funnel not catching anything because this is all glass. So everything does pass in front of that funnel, even those uh, singularities, even though they don't go in that funnel, they go in this funnel. And that funnel there funnels out the gunpowder. Well, not the gunpowder, but the stuff that makes the gunpowder and the stuff that makes the ender dust, right? This one is funneling out all of the... Uh, uh, the dye and all of the non-purple paintballs. The non-purple paintballs go down that way, and then the dye goes this way. Now, I move the dye down to this level. Makes it look a lot nicer in here. We don't have that diagonal belt that just likes to fling people off the roof anymore. Um, and there we go. The TNT is going. You can see that's about to create some more stuff. And then you'll hear the, the hammers going downstairs, making the... Making the things, making the chromatic paintball things. And I've actually got this, so there's still some more to go through the system, because you see there's dye in there. And then the other final big adjustment that I really, that I had to make to make this all work properly, because we were not getting enough ender dust being created per cycle, was I switched this timer up here that is on the... I don't even know what to call this thing yet that you know does our ferns this is now just a one minute timer instead of like I had it turning on for a few seconds turn it off for a few seconds you know every time a singularity went through the system down below like this pulses whenever the singularity goes through which is also what causes our our roses to be grown and our red dye to be released uh, yeah, lots of redstone going on here. Lots of timing happening. It all has to be coordinated and happen at the right time. So this thing had to be, instead of pulsing off and on, in order to get enough material per cycle that we weren't in the negative, that we weren't losing material, like this ender dust was the problem, um, I just switched this whole system to run for the whole minute. So whenever... The cycle starts. This just starts along with the crushing wheels in the whole cycle. It runs for a minute, and then I end up with a positive net amount of this ender dust. So we will eventually need to void this drawer. I'm looking at it right now, going, why does this not have a void upgrade in it right now? V-O-I-D. Why does the void not show up? Well, there it is. Uh, maybe I spelled it wrong. Maybe it's uh, O-I, not I-O. <laughs> there we go. Now that has a void upgrade, just so we don't have any issues down the line. Oh no, Knock left the game. He must be having connection issues. That's a bummer. Yeah, I haven't heard nothing from him in a minute. Does that mean I'm having connection issues? Doesn't seem to be. Nope, you're fine. I'm fine, okay. Uh, anyway, uh, yeah, and then I, I know I showed this in a previous video, but yeah, our, uh, our, um, Radiant induction coils just kind of fly through this so fast that you hardly see them. But, and then the results come over here. But that is chapter one. I mean, chapter three. Chapter, sorry. We're, we cha completed chapter one and two a long time ago. There's there's completion of chapter one right there. And there's completion of chapter two right here. This. And not, not so much this. Like, this was all important. But this is like at the beginning of chapter three. All of this stuff, all this stuff. This right here, this little setup right here is the end of chapter three. So, so guys, it is time, time to open that quest book and go on to chapter four. That is right. I've been holding off on this. We've been avoiding clicking this just for you guys. No, <laughs> no, I just, I wanted to get it on camera. Uh, so I've been work that's why we've been working on all the uh, villager stuff and building you know just doing all the decoration stuff because uh, time has been passing and I haven't been wanting to progress on the quest and I wanted to do something on here so it's why the why the factory looks so good <laughs> it's because I've had lots of time to work on the factory and um, there's also the villager thing and I know I'm supposed to click that quest thing but I'm getting you building anticipation build anticipation look at this thing over here we haven't even talked about the villager trade hall that castle over there is a villager trade hall there's one more thing i have to do for it today 
before we seal it up and call it done. Ooh, you hear that? There's some zombies in here. What? So you see this path right here? And actually, I got a couple villagers right here ready to go. Um, those guys have not had their their profession locked in yet, so that's actually good. Um, this little path right here to leads behind the villagers. This is where we store a zombie. And if if we go, and now you see I have creative flight, and that's because I have a beacon here, and because knock managed to make me a magic feather with one of the extra elytras that I brought back from the end. So we managed to complete that quest, and it is super useful for building. I mean, gosh, if I didn't have that over here to do to finish up all the touches on the outside of this castle, this would look a lot less complete. I can tell you that <laughs> it would look a lot less complete. All right, let's get down in here. Because I want to show you. All right, so originally I had this, uh, you know, piston door. This would keep the zombies out. Um, and I, you know, don't want any zombies getting in the tower or any mobs getting into the tower. It was super important when I first built it because there was a staircase that went up to the top, you know, and led right up to the villagers. So if a zombie happened to get in here, he, he could have walked right up to the villagers. Now, we don't have that issue no more. No more on this tower at all. In fact, we don't have that issue on any of the towers because I removed the staircases. Well, I didn't remove the staircases, but I removed the ability for the staircase to get up to that level of where the villagers are at. So none of these other towers lead up there. Only this one can get you up there. And it's got an elevator. And I, I really like this elevator. I put some thought into this. I had to expand the uh, the tower a little bit, but I wanted it to be super spacious, and I wanted the controls to be on the elevator itself. So I managed to do that. Now, whole tower lifts up in the mechanism. That's what the whole wind turbine for on the top is for. That's all it really does is it powers this elevator. It looks nice. It looks nice. All right, so we come down here. We can see we got a zombie back in there. He can't get to these villagers. Now, he's really interested in me right now, unfortunately, so he's not going to do the job he's supposed to do. Uh, we got one over here as well. Now, this zombie, is he's, he's a bit of an odd case. This zombie was uh, born with an identity issue, and he thinks he identifies as a creeper. You see, he's got his... Uh, as He's got his, his gunpowder and, uh, you know... He's got his creeper face on, but uh, fortunately, even though he identifies as a creeper, he can't explode. So, <laughs> uh, and then we got this guy over here who's uh, he's our tough guy. He's got a uh, uh, diamond helmet and a stone sword to, to really do business. He really does the business. So we got to get one more zombie up in here, and the reason for that, the reason for the zombies is let's say we want to get let's say this guy no not not subscribe uh you got you right here our mending villager uh he's selling emerald he's selling a book for 16 emeralds i i really would like that to be cheaper so i'm gonna lower him down right now he's down in there and the zombie is gonna see him and you can hear it happening you kind of see what's going on over there and he has killed the villager because we are not in we are not in hard mode. Culty hard. We're supposed to be on hard. <laughs> Makes me mad. Makes me real mad. I just lost a villager because the server keeps reverting to normal. <sighs> We're supposed to be on hard. Okay. Well, I think you guys get the idea. Well, you know what? We'll just try it now. I'm gonna do another one just to make sure that that's not that the problem isn't what I think it is. Now, that one should be a zombie now. Yes, he's now a zombie. Okay, cool. I gotta get a new villager for the corner there. Unfortunately, that was our mending villager too. Dang it. Now that's going to take some minute. So now he's there. Uh, I would have to make a potion of weakness. Weakness. Uh, I didn't even. I've got one. Good. And uh, an apple. Golden apple. So now if I. 
Splash him and feed him an apple. He'll convert back. I'll get a bigger discount from him. You guys get the picture. I'm really kind of mad about the the bending villager being gone. Oh, anyway, now that that fiasco is done, our, my dude over there is going to convert. He's going to give me a discount. You guys know the drill for all that. But let's get back up here. And before we were distracted, we were about to do the quest thing. And I should just do that. Now that I'm all disappointed about losing my Mender Villager, it took me like 30 minutes of switching a lectern back and forth to try to get that guy in the first place. So that's why I'm mad. <laughs> that's why I'm mad more than anything. So I'm going to have to spend another 30 minutes trying to get another Mending Villager. Uh, maybe. I could get lucky. I could get lucky. It, has, it hasn't been known to happen. But we want to complete Chapter 3. Chapter 3 complete. Yes. Wait, do I do? Yeah, just accept the things. Accept all the things. Accept the rewards. Then we need to go back to our bulletin board. No. Overview. There we go. Thank you. Overview. And unlock chapter four. Yay! Chapter four unlocked. Also, what is all this? Bonus chapter 3A? I don't remember that. Oh, teleportation alone. What? Ooh, chapter three bonus stuff? Ender machines? Oh, I have to look at this. And then alchemical chemistry. We're definitely going to take a big look at that in the future. But there we go. Chapter 4 and Chapter 4A. Oof, look at all this. But I think we're going to start with Chapter 4. I'm building something here. What is it? Uh, do, do, do. I think that's a matter of... Oh, let me get out of this mode again. Let's think that's a matter of just... Taking these and running them through another three deployers. Oh, of course, we'll need the materials. That's the problem. It's not so much the deployers and the machines, not the issue. It's uh, whatever it is we need to apply to them. So if we look at usages of these guys, right? Usage of the inductive mechanism. Obviously, we're going to make our Invar machines. And that makes all of our thermal expansion machines. Tons of different things can be made with this. Also, we look, then that's going to get converted into our calculation mechanism. And our calculation mechanism is what we're going to use to get into our applied energistic stuff. Gosh, so we got our work cut out for us uh, when it comes to all chapter four. But that's chapter three complete. That is chapter three complete. I think that's a pretty good. I think that's a pretty good uh, update. Hopefully, I can make all this work as an episode, because we got chapter three complete. We went over the villager stuff. I think that's pretty good. So, guys, thanks for watching. Don't forget to hit that like button. Don't forget to subscribe if you want to help the channel out, and ring the bell like your village was under attack. But till next time. I will catch you later. Normally this is where Nock would say bye-bye. <laughs> I wonder what happened bye -bye. to him. Bye-bye. <laughs> I wonder what happened to him.